Hey YouTube, this is Dennis McCool. I'm doing a tabletop review of my new Form one, approved Form 1 9mm. Well, actually, just a 6.5 inch suppressor. <clears throat> Start off with here, we've got a uh, SD Tactical titanium tube. Did a quick and dirty paint on it. I'll end up sending it off and having it sear coated. Got a titanium tube and titanium end cap from SD Tactical. It's the B-size tube, which is exactly the same size and thread pattern as the Liberty Booster and Gym Tech lid. Nice, perfect fit. Comes off and on very easily. <clears throat> Inside the can, I have a series of baffles. I need to take this off on the other end. Baffles came from uh, Dan Medlin or Medlin Machine Works. I've configured this suppressor so it will take either the Gym Tech lid screw on one half by 28 <clears throat> onto a nine millimeter handgun, such as this, or it'll take the Gym Tech three leg adapter. Three leg adapter is not quite as uh, long going into the can, so I've got a little spacer to adapt. <clears throat> Actually, it's longer than this. Uh, so what I've got here is I've got three stainless, I've got a stainless steel spacer Three stainless steel uh, cone cups, 60 degree cone cups, and three uh, aluminum. The whole setup comes in at, at a fraction under 16 ounces. It, actually, it's 15.85 ounces. This ought to be a great setup. One of the things that Dan points out on his video selling these K cups uh, is that when you get these tubes, they're gonna have a little burr on the inside. You know, the, the threads themselves are just a little bit rough. If you take some real fine uh, emery cloth or sandpaper to sand it down, you're gonna get your tubes in, or your, your baffles in a lot easier. They will go in, they're very, very tight. The best way though is just to kind of stack them up. Got the stainless steel first stack them up and then just slide it once it gets started. Just kind of shake the, the tube as it's going down. Get them in there. Screw the Nielsen device on the end. Drop in the extra little spacer based on this thing being shorter. This ought to be a very, very good I haven't fired it yet, just got it drilled out. I drilled uh, the end to 0 0.40. You see that, that goes, including the casing goes through. By the way, it's exactly the same dimension. I also have a Griffin Revo 9. Here it's in the K configuration without the little spacer and three extra baffles. So the, the, my Form 1 suppressor is a little bit taller than this. This has the three leg adapter. If you put the screw mount on this, it ends up being closer to the same, but very comparable. If you put the K, take the K configura configuration out, it's going to actually be end up being a little bit taller. This has the same number, actually one more baffle than this one has. The baffle design is a little bit different on this. This is a little bit lighter because it uses this Inconel type material. This is actually an excellent, excellent suppressor. Uh, I get as good a sound in the K configuration as the full configuration, so I pretty much leave it like this, and I use this on my MP5 and MP5K. <clears throat> but I expect to get very good results out of this. I went with slight oversized drilling on the bore, all the bore holes because I found in making my first uh, Form 1 suppressor over here, the tighter that tolerance, uh, the more likely you get a baffle strike, and number two, the more likely you're going to have an in, in, inaccurate uh, 
suppressor. You know, you're not going to have your bore sighting on your red dot sight isn't going to be the same with and without the suppressor. The bigger that hole is, the more likely they're going to be the same. Obviously, the bigger the hole is, the more gases come out quicker, and you you lose a little bit of sound quality. But in playing with the dimensions of these bores, it just doesn't make enough difference unless you have some sophisticated in instrumentation. So this is the uh, my second uh, Form 1 design to go on either a uh, MP5762, excuse me, uh, 5.56, five, or a 9mm, depending on which end I put on the end of it. Titanium, stainless steel, aluminum, I don't expect to have any problems. I did have a couple extra cups. Uh, comes in at exactly 15 point, I don't know if you can see this, I need to turn it this way. And the, wake itself up here. 15.85 ounces. It is including the baffle. Now, I believe that when you uh, put your Form 1 in, you need to tell them what the can is and not this, because this will change depending on the configuration you're using it. So eff effectively, this is a six inch can. And that's what I got the Form 1 approved for over here. So this is my SD Tactical Medlin Machine Works. Uh, I'm very impressed with Dan's work here. It did take a little bit longer than I was expecting. He was telling me it take about four weeks. He had a machine problem. It took closer to seven weeks to get it. But I'm very, very impressed with the spacing, the sizing, the fit. It, if, if, if anything, it's a little bit tighter than I would have wanted because after you shoot these things, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting anything out. Uh, I'm going to do another video on my first suppressor. This is a 308. 30 caliber suppressor. Uh, I've gone through all kind of machinations getting this thing to function the way I wanted to. I started out with the form freeze plugs and everything else and just went through uh, changing it out with uh, SD Tactical. It's got a titanium can. It's got a Sire Arms Recore through SD Tactical. Got the approval. You, have to, you get, end up getting another form to go along with your Form 1 when they recore it. <clears throat> uh, but I'm going to do another video talking about this one. But my lessons learned on this kind of led me to how I wanted to go about approaching this second one. Hope you find this information helpful. Leave your comments in the section below. Thank you very much.